Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And let's get things going here so I can see your comments. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And it looks like we're up everywhere. Looks good. All right, let's start a recording just in case. And then we'll kick things off. Welcome everyone. Welcome to um, another Creative Cloud Monday where we're going to be talking about photography and I'm, I'm starting to dedicate my Monday streams to something photography or photo related in general. And uh, today is no different. We're going to talk about making your photos look better. So I see uh, Amber, I see Victoria, I see Andrew Kavanaugh. What's going on, man? I see Anna, Rudy. Welcome, Nicole. Welcome, everybody. I see I love Patsy. Rachel, Reggie, Colleen, and Logan, and Wolfgang, and Carol, and <laughs> Pinter, they just keep coming in. Uh, welcome, everybody. Hi, Rose, or Ross, sorry, uh, and Scott. Uh, so with that said, today we're going to dive right in, and I'm going to give you some simple, easy tips to make your photos look better in Photoshop. And the reason I'm going to say these are easy, because unlike anything else in Photoshop, this is really easy. This is going to be like the easiest thing you've ever done because what I'm going to show you is the secret, 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 secret filter in Photoshop that just makes everything look better easily, quickly, sometimes even with one click. Depends on the photo. So let's dive in. Let's talk about what, or let me show you what I'm talking about. And that way you guys can uh, see what's going to happen here. So let me switch over to my computer. And I've got an image open and this particular image has layers and let me uh, actually let me revert it back to the original. So because I kind of already worked on it. Let's go back to the way it used to look. Let's go back to that. There we go. That's the original photo. Now, um, if you're a photographer, then chances are just there's a good chance you're working in Lightroom or maybe even bridge. And chances are, unless you're shooting sports or something very high action, nine times out of 10, you're shooting in raw or camera raw. And therefore you're used to working on your images in Lightroom or bridge in the raw format in, in camera raw or the develop module inside of Lightroom or the edit module inside of Lightroom CC. And that, the beauty of that is it's all non-destructive it's all sliders, it's all point and click, it's easy. If you make a mistake, no problem. You haven't ever damaged the actual photo and you could just move on, redo it, undo it and keep going. But if you're not using Lightroom, if you're not using Camera Raw, if you're not a photographer and you're not shooting raw, and maybe you're a graphic designer and you've got a layered file like this and something's just throwing it off like this horrible blue cast over the photo, that's where you might get stuck and you might say, well, how do I fix this? Because if you look at this, if you look at this layout, you look at the layers panel, there's a, uh, there's a background image, which is the, the one with the problem. But then there's an image of a video thumbnail on the left hand side. There's some text that says adventure gear. There's a little tent in the upper right hand corner. Well, those don't have any problems. It's, it's really just this one layer that has a problem. So if I try and do an overall adjustment to an image, I don't want to mess up the things that look good. I just want to mess with the thing that doesn't look good. Or I want to fix the thing that doesn't look good. Let's put it that way. Now, Photoshop for many years has been able to fix problems like this. You could go into curves. Okay, let, let's do that. Let's go image, uh, adjustments. Let's go to curves. <gasps> oh my God, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so if you've ever said that, if you've ever opened up the curves dialog box and then immediately closed it, you're not alone. Oh, well, I heard you can do this with levels, image adjustment levels. And you go in I'm like, oh, I, I, I don't know what to click. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to fix this. Then you're probably not alone. Like those tools have been around almost since the beginning of Photoshop and professional Photoshop users would know how to fix this with curves. But if you're new, if you're a beginner, if you're even if you just don't want to use curves anymore because it's not that easy then there's a better way and it's called the camera raw filter camera raw has been a, photo, a part of photoshop for ages you know probably over a decade 
But in order to get an image in the camera raw, you'd have to start from the file menu and say open in camera raw. And it wouldn't necessarily bring in the camera raw a layered PSD like this. It wouldn't bring in the camera raw back in the, back in the early days a JPEG. So it had to be a raw file. Well, today that all goes away because all you'd have to do is go to the layer you want to fix, go to your filter menu. The camera raw filter works on a layer by layer basis. So you don't ever have to say, oh, I, oh, I don't have a raw file or I have a, you know, a flat image. So I can go to the camera raw filter and then all I have to do to fix this particular problem is just click on one thing, the white balance eyedropper tool. Because the problem with this photo is the white balance is off. It's got a blue cast to it. So all I have to do with this eyedropper is find something in the photo that should be gray. If I don't have anything that should be gray, the next thing I'm going to look for is something that should be white or black. Well, I have something that should be gray. The bottom of the tent. This area should be gray. One click. That's it. I have to figure it out in curves because I have an eyedropper that's dedicated to fixing white balance problems. So click if you even if you click in the wrong spot and the photo doesn't do what you want, just keep clicking until you find the spot that does what you want. So if you forgot what did Terry say I need to click on, click around. You'll get you'll get there. Um, so something that should be around 18% gray. Now, there are other issues in the photos. I, I'm not really happy with the shadows. I'm not really happy with other. The, the sky could be better. Well, then that's the next easy button. Auto. Because back in the day, auto used to be a bad word. You would use auto and you're like, oh my God, it's horrible. Because auto, back in the day, did the same thing to every single photo. Now, auto looks at it intelligently using Adobe Sensei to figure out how this photo should look based on other photos that look like it. So if I go ahead and click auto, it just does a better job of adjusting. Now, I don't necessarily always agree with what auto did. In this case, I don't agree, but it got me started. And now all I have to do is say, oh, look, it moved a bunch of sliders. Let me play with those sliders and see if I like them, like it better. Like I don't ever like lower contrast, usually nine times out of 10. So I'll double click and reset the contrast back to zero. Now, it did raise my shadows, which is what I wanted, but not enough, so I can keep going. I can bring up the shadows more. It lowered the exposure a little bit. Maybe I think I want the exposure up a little bit. So I can visually see with a slider, too much, too little, not enough, keep going until I get it just right. Um, I want the blacks a little darker. And again, that's too much, too much, just right. Clarity, this photo could stand a little more clarity. And of course, the beautiful dehaze, which will get rid of some of that atmospheric haze. Don't go too far with dehaze because it will start to mess up the photo. But there we go. So now when I click OK, we get a much better scene. This is where we were before. Just so you remember, you can barely see her face. And this is where we are now. So with one filter, I'm able to make this layer better. Now let's keep going. Let's close this image and let's take a look at another one. Uh, let's go to this one. Now, image looks okay. Um, the problem is there, there was no, there, there was either no flash used on this or not enough. There's no fill light. Basically, her face is kind of dark you know, looking at the rest of the scene. So I'd love it if I could go back and relight this photo. Well, I can with that same filter. Now, let me teach you one more thing about this filter before we keep using it. The camera raw filter works destructively unless you tell it not to. So in other words, if I run the camera raw filter right now and I don't do this, I don't do one step before I run it, I'm actually editing this photo. I don't want to edit the photo. I don't want, I don't want to work destructively if I can avoid it. So before I run the camera raw filter, you're going to do one thing first. You're going to say convert for smart filters. What that will do is turn that background or that layer into a smart object. Now it's got that smart object icon on it. And that means now I can run any filter and it won't be destructive. I can always undo it, redo it, turn it off, delete it, get rid of it. So from here, I'm going to go in and say filter 
Don't use the one that was at the top because that just says do what you did to the last photo again. And this one is not the same photo. So always go down and choose it again. So camera raw filter brings it up from scratch. Now I could hit auto to see what auto does. And auto kind of fixed the background a little, but it still didn't light her the way I want it to. So luckily there is this beautiful radio filter. Click on the radio filter. I zeroed out everything else. The only thing I have bumped up is exposure. And now I can drag out a radio filter and look, she gets a little brighter. I can say not as bright or brighter. That's too bright. You get the idea. But just adding a little bit of fill light to this portrait, this outdoor portrait will make all the difference in the world. So we click OK. And now the difference is because I ran the smart filter first, this is now just a adjustment to that layer. So I can always come back in and turn it off. I can always come back and turn it back on. I can always double click on it and get right back to the original settings. So if I looked at it, printed it, whatever, too bright, not bright enough, I can go right back to that radio filter, click right back on that adjustment that I made and say, oh, no, 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 it needs to be a little brighter and brighten it right back up without having to start over again. That's probably too bright. But anyway, without having to start over again. So that's even better. The fact that you can always go back to the camera raw filter and readjust it if you don't like it or if someone complains or your client says no, not enough, too much, whatever. All right, um, next up. Let's close that one. And let's try this one. Let's. This is one where uh, this one has an obvious problem. This is in Amsterdam, besides the whatever that is on the uh, side of the pier there. <laughs> but the buildings are kind of like, eh, not in the right perspective. This building looks like it's kind of leaning over. This building looks kind of okay. This is all slanted, and this is all slanted. And while some of that might be true in Amsterdam, <laughs> we want to fix it to make sure that it looks the way it's supposed to look. So once again, filter, convert for smart filters first. That will turn it into a smart object. Now you can play all you want without ever damaging the actual photo. Uh, so in this case, what I want to do is, yes, you can double click to reset each slider, by the way. Um, let's go to the filter menu, camera raw filter. And in this case, I'm going to grab the geometry or the transform tool. It's actually called geometry in Lightroom. But anyway, we'll grab the transform tool and I could try auto upright, but I know auto upright in this case is going to be a disappointment because it's not going to do what I want. So I'm going to go straight over to guided upright. So with guided upright, I'm just going to go ahead and now guided upright requires two or more guides. It won't work, won't do anything with just one guide. So when I drag out one guide of what should be straight, like that should be straight, but it's not. I let go, nothing happens because it requires two or more. Now you can drag out a, a horizontal, vertical, whatever you want at this point, but I'm going to drag out another horizontal or another vertical at this point. So I'm going to say something like that. That should be straight. Now watch what happens when I let go of the second guy. Boom. We're almost there. But two in this case isn't quite enough because I still don't like the way that this is slanted. So I drag out a third guide and boom, we get there. So quickly and easily, just fixing the perspective of your travel shots, your skylines, your cityscapes, your tall buildings with a single bound, just click and fix them easily here in Photoshop with the camera raw filter. So we get that and we got that now I'm, now I'm happy. I could keep going and adjusting. I can go right back into camera raw if I want to and do more. So I could hit auto if I want to see what that will do. Yeah, that kind of brightens it up a bit. It kind of brings up the lights here. Um, and I can click up, oh, and let's bring up a little dehaze on that just a little bit. Maybe double click to get rid of the sat saturation. Vibrance is good. Maybe a little clarity. Yeah, look at that. Just pump that right on up. Click OK right back. So again, this is where we were. This is where we are now because of camera, camera filter, the filter in Photoshop. All right, so let's close this. And now let's do something a little differently. Um, I'm going to talk about 
recomposing a photo, and then we're going to get into selective adjustments. So recomposing, actually, we're going to do recomposing, white balance again, then selective adjustments, and then we'll call it a day. All right, so this one real quick. Now this is this is a photo just kind of out of the camera, and it's a it's it's a guy taking a picture. But there's somebody's head in the way, like there's a distraction here. There's like some kind of curtain or something going on up there, and it's just really not composed in a great way. It's, you got more distractions than you got than you have subject, and also the white balance is off. There's too much yellow in the photo, just like there was too much blue in the original photo that we used. So same thing, filter, convert for smart filters, camera raw filter, and we're gonna fix multiple things in this one. So first, white balance eyedropper. I don't have anything that should be gray. A shirt looks like it's black in some other color. This is green, I don't know what that is, but there's this should be white and it's yellow right now. Click, look at that. Just took all that yellow out of the image that doesn't belong there. It's still yellow that belongs there but the yellow in here did not belong there. Now I could also say, well, you know what? We can bump up the exposure a little bit on this. We can uh, bump up the shadows a little bit on this. And we can then say, okay. And we got a much better photo already. But again, now we still have these distracting elements. This up here and this up here, they just aren't doing the photo any justice. So we go to our crop tool, which is not in the camera raw filter because you already have a crop tool in Photoshop. Oh, that's the frame tool. I want to go to the crop tool. And with the crop tool, I'm just going to recompose it myself. So I'm just going to say, you know what? We don't really need that much of the right side of the photo. Uh, that kind of gets rid of the curtain up there. We don't def definitely don't want this person's head or whatever that is in the way. And now that we've got it, we don't want him little in the corner either. So we can probably bring this down a bit more. Make him more of the subject, make him more of the focus of the image. You have this rule of thirds going on in the crop tool automatically unless you turn it off. So everywhere there's an intersection should be, you know, that's where you would put something of interest. So I can put the point of interest of that intersection right on his face because that theoretically will drive your attention to that spot. And there we are. So we lost a lot of the bottom of the photo, but that's better than having that big head in the way that didn't look good where it was because you can't really even tell what it is. All right, so um, just recomposing the photo, fixing the white balance, and of course, adjusting the exposure there as well. All right, next up, let's get rid of that one. And now for our final one, we're going to get out of the crop tool. And this scene, I actually took this uh, standing in Canada, shooting across the river into the Detroit area. So I'm, I'm on this side in Canada. This is Detroit over here. This is the Detroit, Detroit River. There's the Ambassador Bridge that goes from Detroit to Canada. Um, and you can't even tell what's going on because it's so dark. It's so bad. There's so many things wrong with this. So once again, convert for smart filter so it's non-destructive. You can always go back and filter, camera raw filter. And now I can play. I can say, well, what if I were to go in and add, um, just, just for giggles, let's just go ahead and do auto. All right, auto kind of brought that out a little bit, but not enough. So now let's go in and just raise the exposure a bit. All right, that's looking better. But this is all still in the shadows, still in, we don't even know what's going on over here. So this is one of those where if I try and save this side, I'm going to screw up the other side because I'm going to have to adjust this side so much that it's going to mess up this side. This side I'm kind of okay with. It's, it's, the horizon's a little crooked. We'll fix that later. But other than that, I'm okay with this side so far. So let's work on this side. And that's where you get into what's called the adjustment brush. So you have three selective adjustments. The, the adjustment brush, the graduated filter, and the radial filter. That's the one we use for fill flash. Um, so if I use the adjustment brush, that lets me do any one of these things or any multiples of these things on a brush as opposed to doing the entire photo. And of course, I can make my brush bigger. 
And I can then come in. I'm going to use my uh, Wacom here. And I can just go in and bring the exposure up on this side of the photo. Now, once I paint this all in, once I get this looking, oh, look, we can see stuff over there. How about that? There's actually a sidewalk there. Who knew? I knew because I was standing there. But anyway, I can then go in and say, oh, let's make it a little brighter. And just bring that detail right back out of that photo. So your, your camera sensors of today do a great job of capturing detail. Even detail you can't see. Still there. All right, next up. Well, why stop there? We can go in and we can say, you know what? I know the Detroit River isn't the cleanest water in the on the planet, but we can still make it better looking. We can still make it bluer. We can make it cleaner looking. Who'll know? All right, so let's go in. And uh, now I'm on the adjustment brush still, but you notice at the very top here, there's add, meaning you just keep painting and you're adding the same adjustment. So I'd be brightening up the water, which I don't want to do. Or new, which means... Give me a new adjustment because you can have as many adjustment brushes as you want in the image. So I'm making a new one now just for the water. And on the water, I don't necessarily want exposure as much as I want temperature. I want to cool the water down a bit. I want to make the water more blue. So I can just go in. Oh, look at that. Look at that nice blue water in there. Oh. If it only looked that good in reality. All right, there we go. And it's not affecting the sidewalk because it's a new adjustment. So there's a new pin. That pin is for that adjustment. This pin would be to go back and make adjustments to that adjustment. So each pin is separate. So with that said, I can also do one more thing. Maybe I want my sky to be a little bit more dramatic. So we'll do the same thing with temperature. Maybe not as much. We'll do, I'll add a little dehaze to it. And now we'll just go ahead from the very top of the image and pull down. Maybe to something like that. And now we can play around with it. We can say, hey, I would love to dehaze that sky a bit more or not. So it's just adjusting that graduated area. I can say, you know what, maybe I do want the exposure a little brighter in that area. And maybe I do want a little bit more contrast to bring out those dark clouds. And maybe a little more dehaze. Not too much. Maybe a little more saturation. Too much. Back off right about there. And you get the idea. So, making those selective adjustments in the image using the adjustment brush the graduated filter, and if need be, the radio filter. So now when I click OK, that's where we are now compared to that. So a nothing shot that no one would care about, no one would look at twice, to a shot that has some interesting things in it now. And once again, the dead giveaway that you didn't straighten your horizon is that it's still crooked. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's grab the crop tool. And um, I could sit here and try and rotate it and get it just right, but why do the extra work if I don't have to when there's actually a straighten tool in the crop tool? It's right up here at the top. So if I grab the straighten tool and then just say, what should be straight? This should be straight. Just draw a line. And it will make that line perfectly straight. And then you're done. And if you say, uh, don't delete crop pixels, you will still have the full image there when you're ready to go back to it. All right, so now our horizon's crooked. Detroit is looking better. Canada's not looking so bad. And there are more things we could do in Photoshop, but I think that's enough for you to go play with. All right, so with that said, I wanna thank everyone for watching. Yeah, I like blue water too. Um, Yep, you can handle as many adjustments as you want to throw at it. And now didn't. I'm glad I taught you something you didn't know. And let me make sure I didn't miss anything else up here. All right. Okay, that looks good. Yep, Amsterdam is a great place. All right. 
<laughs> Someone's noticing the performance in Photoshop being better in Lightroom. I'll take your word for it. All right. Good, good, good. And looks like I got everything. All right. With that said, everybody, cheers. Thanks for watching. And we will catch you on the next one. So today is Photography Monday. Tomorrow, as usual, is InDesign Tuesday. So if you like InDesign page layout, graphic design, join me tomorrow. Same time, same channels, except for Facebook will be the InDesign channel. Bye, everybody. Catch you on the next one. Uh -huh.